Good morning, everyone. I can't seem to get my lights working this morning, so I'm a bit in the dark. <laughs> so tech is not being my friend today. Um, welcome today to uh, the eight critical drivers to RTO success. My name is Angela O'Connell Richards. I am the owner and director of Vivacity RTO Coaching and Consulting and Vivacity Team, the outsourcing service for RTOs. So in today's mastermind, we are going to do a full overview of the eight critical drivers to RTO success. So it'll give you a good idea about what is this all about? This is a mastermind that we've been delivering now for, uh, this is our third year. So it was uh, a creation that came out of the pandemic, uh, which is uh, one of the good things that came out of it, is when I realised that RTOs need more than just compliance. We cannot survive on compliance and not alone. We need to actually focus on the business side of running an RTO. And this is where the eight critical drivers came about. So they're the drivers for your RTO in order to make sure that it is successful. So my goal today is to serve quality training organisation and to help you grow and scale as an RTO. And as I said, it's not just focusing on the compliance side of running an RTO. It is all about looking at the whole business as an RTO and what do you need to do to have and what do you need to have in place in order to have a successful RTO. So today I'll be sharing with you my experiences of over 30 years within the training training industry and I've owned and operated uh, I currently have three businesses that I own and operate and over the years um, I've had about 10 businesses that I've run uh, in my lifetime so uh, two of those include RTOs so I owned and operated my own RTOs and I've also owned and operated a number of other uh, training organizations and businesses uh, around Australia so welcome to today's session now, what I would like you to do is focus on your business today. That's it. I want you to take away all of those distractions as there will always be plenty of time to work in your business. For the next 90 minutes, I want you to make your business your priority. So remove all your distractions, turn your phone to mute, turn off your emails and place a do not disturb sign up. Uh, and tell your team that you are unavailable right now. So we've got a couple of people just arriving, so uh, which is really good. Um, but uh, just a reminder to turn your your microphone to mute, so that and our team will try and keep on top of it as well. Uh, but turn your microphone to mute uh, unless we have a question uh, that you would like to ask. Okay, so let's get this started. So welcome everybody. I can see there's a few people online, um, including our members as well that we have online. Okay, so, yep, get to the next one. So the eight critical drivers, we actually have a session every month. So it's on the second Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. and we cover one of the critical drivers each month. February is always an overview. So we are going through all of the critical drivers. And what that means is we're looking at every uh, single uh, critical driver and how that applies within your business. We'll also uh, have got upcoming events uh, where we'll cover each of the individual critical drivers, including students and clients, training products, leadership and team, systems and practices, marketing and sales, financial viability, quality and compliance, and industry and networking. So all of these drivers were what I had identified as uh, what every RTO needs to focus on in order to be successful. And that's where they all came about. So it was all about looking at your RTO, not just as a compliance requirement, but also looking at the business side of running your RTO. Now, I encourage you to interact today so you can pop your questions in, your, in the chat. Love to know who's here. 
So if you could put in the chat, where are you uh, calling in from today? So I'd love to know where are you calling in from? So what state uh, you might be in, what city you are in. Uh, we have people all over Australia uh, who work with us at uh, Vivacity and they've been attending the eight critical drivers as well. So I'd love to know what state are you in? What suburb are you in? Pop it in the chat. So we're hailing from Newcastle in New South Wales. So we have our uh, our team are all remote. They all work remotely and you'll see some of our team members uh, that are online today. Uh, and we have people all over the place. So we even have, uh, we have people in uh, Newcastle, Maitland area, as well as Central Coast. But we've also got team members in uh, WA and we have uh, team members in the Philippines. So they're all online as well. So I'd love to see where are you hailing from today? And I don't think my chat is actually coming up. Otherwise, uh, no one's actually chatting with me. <laughs> so I'll just see if I can get my uh, chat online to work. So we'll see where you're from. And that chat online is not working. Let's see. <sighs> no, I can't see my chat. Can anybody else on the team see the chat? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, all right, so Amanda can see it. Um, I've been having problems with my teams, so it's uh, been playing up today. So uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, letting me know in the chat. Okay, so we'd love to, I'd love to see your lovely faces. So if you are online, uh, if you can pop your camera on so I can see you, uh, it's a great way that I can interact with you. Make sure that you've got your microphone off unless we're asking, you're asking a question, uh, but I'd also like you to pop those questions in the chat as well, and I'll see if I can get my chat working. Chatting is keenly encouraged, so we do like you to pop your, any questions that you may have in the chat. You see that we've got our other team members online as well, so they're here to be able to answer your questions as well. Uh, please also use those reactions. So you'll see uh, that we've got uh, those different reactions that you can uh, choose from. So if you have a question, you may want to raise your hand uh, and we can uh, take you off mute and you can ask that question live. Uh, if you agree with something, a thumbs up. Uh, if you love something, give us a heart. And if you really think something deserves an applause, uh, yes, you can also give us an applause as well. So are you ready to get started? So we'll get uh, started now. All right. So as I said, the eight critical drivers came about during the pandemic because it was something that we identified that there are a lot of RTOs out there uh, that were struggling, particularly through the pandemic, and they're still struggling ongoing when it comes to the business side of running their RTO. So we implement with all of our training, with all of our clients, uh, the scaling up method. So it's all about start up, scale up or screw up um, or stall out, fail to scale at all. So 97% of small businesses fail in Australia within the first three years. So this is not an uncommon statistic. It is also a statistic within uh, when it comes to training industry as well. And we want to make sure that you are not one of those and that you are successful. So I'd like to know in the chat, what was your biggest challenge last year? What was your biggest challenge? What did you find was uh, the hardest part about last year? And I'll see if I can get my chat <laughs> up. There we go. No, I still am not getting the chat. So I might have to get the team to help me out here. So what was... Uh, what were your biggest challenges in 2022? Ah, there we go. Found it. All right. Excellent. No, it's not the same one as well. So I'm going to have to not use chat today, I think. <laughs> doesn't want to work. Hi, are you able to hear me? <clears throat> yes, 
hi i um i haven't got a chat function and i can't see any of the um emotion or yep, reaction okay. so so the the prezo that you sent up just before um with all of that sort of toolbar um i, I haven't got access to any of that okay Okay, cool. So um, we'll see. We'll have a look at that. So thank you for letting me know. Um, so while you're having a chat, what was your biggest challenge in 2022? Um, I, I think um, certainly the unpredictability in terms of uh, student enrolments. Um, we found or, or we are finding that students are not committing as they perhaps would have been. Um, so completion rates? Uh, no, just from an enrolment perspective. Um, in our RTO, we also had a transitioning. Um, uh, uh, one of the training packages, we had to transition, which was another layer of um, yeah. um, stress. Um, yeah. So I think I think from you know the business coming in, the the enrolment perspective, we we found it very difficult with people not committing. Or making, or, or perhaps being less decisive about committing to an enrolment, um, and then obviously, you know, just that whole piece around the transitioning training package as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and there was a lot last year as well, uh, and we've got a few more this year as well. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that one's really good because our next critical drivers is actually on students and clients. So it's, um, and it's all about. Uh, how to get those students and clients um, and where do you get them from and using different strategies such as uh, social media where you can engage with them there. And then what is your unique selling position? So what makes you different uh, from other RTOs and why should they study with you? Now, we've got lots of different strategies that you can put in place. We've also got one that we do on marketing. Uh, so that's a really good one. So thank you for sharing that. That was Kira, I think. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing that because uh, I'd like to uh, discuss that further and uh, look at some different strategies that we might be able to put in place. So if there's anybody else who'd like to share, uh, what was your biggest challenge? Because I'd like to discuss those today and go through and do a focus on those uh, with you. So uh, Kira came up with students not completing uh, or just even getting them to enrol to in the first place and not committing to their training. Uh, and then that transitioning from superseded training products and getting students over to the new um, new training product on your scope of registration. So uh, thank you very much for sharing that. And that is exactly what we cover within the eight critical drivers. We look at all of those different areas. So last year, there was a lot of change that happened. Uh, there, we had a change of federal government, which had a major impact on the training industry, including the delay of the vet reform and the draft standards. Uh, we finally got the draft standards uh, at the end of the year, uh, and those, those were released, and then we had the opportunity to provide feedback on those draft standards as well. So there was those as well. Um, we've also got that to deal with this year. Uh, a lot of government funding contracts opened back up again, and they opened up those contracts to uh, new RTOs that had not uh, had access to government funding before. So there were opportunities uh, with that as well. And then stakeholders were asked to provide feedback on uh, all these changes that are coming up. And that we've also got, even this year, the changes to training products that are happening. Uh, and uh, all RTOs and all stakeholders have an opportunity to provide feedback on those as well. ASCO audits were down by 47% last year, but that um, and that has made a lot of people feel more comfortable around when it comes to audits. And uh, they a lot of people got through their re-registration audit with a desk audit. But that doesn't mean we relax on that because the thing is, what will happen, what we foresee will happen is. Uh, just because you got through on your re-reg with a desk audit doesn't mean that you're not going to have an audit, another audit for the next seven years. What will happen is they will do a skills focus audit uh, where they're looking at different training products and they'll do a focus on those. Uh, they'll also look at the different delivery methods that you have um, and do a focus on those. So just because we had uh, ASQA audits were down last year, 
doesn't mean that that's going to be the same this year. So um, I think what it does, it gives false security to those that actually got through on a desk audit. Um, we are always making sure that you're uh, ready for your audit and that uh, we're always looking at our compliance on an ongoing play, uh, basis. Another struggle that a lot of RTOs had last year was unemployment. So there was actually, we actually hit our lowest unemployment rate in 48 years. So it, mean, it meant that there was actually a shortage of staff. So everywhere, uh, and, the, and training industry is not just the only one, uh, you would have experienced this across with your clients as well. There are labour shortages across all industry sectors. And how is that impacting on on um, everyone. So for RTOs, it's uh, actually trying to find staff members to fill those roles within your RTOs. But it's also how are you ensuring that you're providing the training that industry needs to get people into those industry sectors? And what's going to be happening is migration. The migration laws are, have changed. Uh, the government have identified that there is a, a skill shortage in Australia and their solution is to open up more migration into Australia. Australia. So they actually um, increased uh, the migration numbers by 20%. So that means that we've got uh, more opportunities for people to come into Australia to fill those gaps. But the other problem that we've also experienced is uh, visas. So visas, are, in particular education visas, have been taking such a long time to be processed. So uh, that there was a huge backlog due to the pandemic and there are all these people who applied during the pandemic and we now have a huge backlog of those uh, immigration visas but also education visas of people trying to get in Australia. So there's lots of things that have changed over the last couple of years uh, and 2022 being the first year really um, after the pandemic. There are so many things that we're now dealing with uh, due to the pandemic. So what are you doing within your RTO to identify um, how you can adjust and change with industry? So what does the future hold for us in 2023? We have our new draft standards. Uh, which are anticipated that we'll have another set of draft standards that will come out. So we've had the draft standards that were released at the end of last year. We had the opportunity to provide feedback by the end of January, which a lot of uh, stakeholders and RTOs did do that. We also uh, participated in that as well. Uh, but what will happen now is they'll take all of that feedback. The government will take that. And that's an independent body. It's not ASQA. It's an independent body that will take all of that uh, feedback. And then they will identify opportunities for improvement on those draft standards. What I did identify with those draft standards, it's a lot of going back to the old AQTF, so the Australian Quality Training Framework uh, that we had pre-ASQA, uh, so pre-going to a federal regulator uh, instead of our state regulators and uh, the, st the standards for RTOs. So it's looking way back to those um, uh, framework that we had prior to ASQA's implementation. But one of the good things that came about, like I've seen a lot of things uh, within the standards that are actually really good for RTOs, is a focus on continuous improvement and how are you applying that continuous improvement throughout your organisation. Um, and we, we never took it away. We actually have opportunities for improvement uh, process within our policies and procedures. So it's a, a return of that. The other areas where there were some um, positive changes is very much a focus on trainers and assessors and their professional development and how are they maintaining their currency within the industry. And then um, a change for RTOs is more of a focus when it comes to industry consultation is more of a focus on not just consultation, but it's bringing the community. How are you meeting the community needs when it comes to uh, employment outcomes. So when you're delivering your training, what are those opportunities that your students have um, following that? Okay, so uh, so that's the standards. We also have some new requirements around financial viability that's uh, going to come up. Uh, there, that once again, going back to the old model of financial viability with uh, RTOs being required to submit a financial viability risk assessment for their um, re-registration as part of their re-registration. So this is a possibility uh, that may be coming up 
uh, with the changes with these standards. There's also a major change with the qualifications. So all of our training products are going to be changing. Uh, they, they've already released those uh, that draft framework and they're asking for feedback from uh, industry stakeholders, including RTOs. Uh, and there are some forums that are coming up where you can participate in that, where you can learn more about how these changes are going to impact your RTO and also the industry sector. Uh, so that it's actually a positive change. It comes around, it, it's very much in the model of micro-credentialing and looking at courses that we can deliver that are more specific around what industry sector needs. So it's looking at those industries and what are, how can we put units together that are actually going to meet their needs rather than a full qualification that may not be relevant uh, for people getting into that industry sector. So some major changes with how we're going to be delivering our training is coming up. Uh, this year, it's more of uh, providing feedback and identifying uh, different training that you could provide that would meet those micro-credentialing requirements. And one of the things that we've had a huge focus on with our clients is what are you doing within your RTO to provide short courses that are meeting those industry sector needs? So jump on it right now and start doing micro-credentialing now. Uh, there is also opportunities for government funding under micro-credentialing as well. So I would, um, one, a big focus that I see with RTOs is looking at those smaller short courses that you can provide that are going to meet those industry sector needs. Another change is language, literacy and numeracy now has a cousin that's joined the family digital skills. So we now have LLND. So um, what have you done within your organisation to change your LLN assessments to include digital skills as well? And how are you identifying the training products that you are delivering? Um, how are you ensuring that you're, you're meeting your student needs and you've identified what support services you may need to provide those students based on those assessments that you're doing prior to course commencement? So, and it's really looking at those digital skills. So a lot of things have changed. We now um, have a much bigger focus on digital skills in a lot of training products. How are you assessing those digital skills of your students in order to set them up for success when it comes to their training? And then uh, the National Foundation Skills Framework. So this is looking at those foundation skills, which very much ties in with language literacy and numeracy. Uh, but how uh, the other uh, part is providing training in those foundation skills. So we actually just had our compliance webinar um, on Monday. And in that compliance webinar, we had a big focus on looking at language literacy and numeracy and digital skills and writing uh, those assessments that are meeting the requirements of the students and the training product that you wish them to enter into. And it's really looking at the foundation skills of those training products in order for them to successfully complete that training. So there's opportunities to provide training at your RTO in foundation skills. So if they don't have the required language literacy, numeracy and digital skills, what are some training that you could offer that would be foundation skills for that industry sector to meet those industry needs? And then the other one is industry engagement reforms. So there's been a lot of focus on how are our training products meeting those industry requirements um, and a lot of feedback uh, that the government are seeking from stakeholders to identify what are those opportunities for the future. So as you can see, lot happening in 2023, a lot of changes that are going to be happening within the training industry. What are you doing to meet those needs? What are you doing when it comes to these changes that are coming up? How is your RTO evolving and changing to, in order to meet those needs? And that's where the critical drivers really do focus. So with the eight critical drivers to RTO success, we're very much focused on what drives your RTO? And these drivers I identified through my over 30 years of experience in the training industry and also being a business coach for RTO owners and directors. These are the areas where we see that there are weaknesses within uh, RTOs. So uh, quality and compliance is a big area. We cannot 
not have this as a critical driver when it comes to RTOs. Uh, there is a huge focus with all of the changes that are coming up on quality and compliance, and there always will be when it comes to the training industry. So what, uh, what do you have in place in order to maintain your quality of your training and the outcomes that you are achieving? And then that ongoing compliance, what are you doing within your RTO to ensure that you're complying with the standards, but also uh, foreseeing what's going to happen in the future, particularly when it comes to the new draft standards and how that's going to impact your RTO. Other things that are happening with the changes, so we've got the new draft standards, but there's also um, under the legislative requirements and uh, what's happening under the VET reform is workforce development planning. So what are you doing within your RTO for planning and developing your team members, in particular trainers and assessors, and ensuring that they're maintaining their currency within their industry. So this is going to also have a major impact on RTOs because as an RTO owner, director or senior management, you're going to be responsible for putting into place um, the, that workforce development planning within your RTO. So what are you going to be doing with that and where are you at with that right now? Financial viability. So uh, what we go through, and I'm going to go through in all of these in more detail, but financial viability of your RTO is very, very important. It's not just something that you do when you start an RTO. It's something that you need to be looking at on an ongoing basis. Uh, marketing and sales. So uh, specifically meeting the requirements of the standards and also how we are recruiting those students and getting them into your RTO. And then, of course, looking at the systems and practices within your RTO, uh, compliance, a lot of compliance is around those systems and practices that you have in place, such as your student management systems, you might be doing online learning, there's a range of different things uh, that you may have in place. And then, of course, we need to have a good leadership team. So who are on your team and do you have the right people in the right seats on your bus when it comes to your RTO. So who are they on your team? Uh, looking at the training products, what training products do you have on your scope of registration? And how have you adjusted those training products to meet industry sector needs? And then students and clients. So uh, that was one that Kira came up with earlier is that is was a major issue in 2022 is how do we get those students how do we retain those students and transition and teach out uh, when it comes to all of those training products that have changed uh, what are you doing to give a exceptional student journey and and how are you promoting that out to uh, social networks as well why should a student come to your rto and why should they study at your rto uh, it's really sharing that student experience and then industry and networking. So industry and networking is all about uh, how are we engaging with the industry and identifying those industry needs, but then networking with other businesses to identify, well, um, how are you establishing yourself as a leader in your industry sector when you're delivering training? Uh, so it's engaging with industry and uh, very much so going to be community as well as we've seen in the draft standards. Okay, so that's a quick overview. Um, and these are the you know, some ideas, some different things that you can do um, and where the critical drivers focus. So when it comes to quality and compliance, it's looking at your trainers and assessors, your training and assessment strategies, uh, delivery plans, policies and procedures. Um, what do you have in place when it comes to the delivery of your training and ensuring that we're maintaining that high level of of quality and outcomes. When it comes to industry and networking, so it's that consultation, industry networks, are there partnership opportunities that you may be missing out on uh, where you may be able to partner with industry or uh, partnerships with maybe uh, suppliers to your industry where you might be able to deliver training uh, for those partners. So there's lots of different opportunities there. Um, also job active providers, so uh, working with the unemployed and getting them into uh, workplace. So what uh, what what type of training do you have that's meeting those needs? Um, students, when it comes to students and clients, it's that student retention and the client success. So it's looking at uh, those employers that you're uh, delivering training for those outcomes there. How are you meeting their needs and how are you adjusting your training to meet those, uh, those industry sector needs? Um, and really looking at that whole student journey and how they uh, engage with your RTO and ongoing, uh, where are you re-engaging them in 
into your training. So upskilling them once they've completed training. Are there other opportunities that you may have that students could come back to your RTO? And then also looking at those completion rates. When it comes to training products, it's meeting the industry needs, uh, looking at those rules of evidence, principles of assessment and micro-credentialing, which is a huge area as well. Uh, and then uh, looking at those training products that are meeting those industry sector needs right now. How can you adjust what you're delivering to meet those needs? When it comes to leadership and team, uh, retaining team members right now, you might find that this is a big problem because at the moment there is so such a lack of people looking for work. Uh, there are more people looking for staff than there are people looking for a job. So what are you doing to retain your team members that you currently have within your organisation? Um, have you? What is the culture of your organisation? How? Why should people stay working for you, or why should someone come and join your team? So it's really looking at that culture and the values within your organisation and with throughout your leadership and team. When it comes to systems and practices, we're looking at student management systems, but also looking at your onboarding process. So how are you onboarding your students um, and engaging them so that they are staying within the training and completing the training as well? Um, and also, uh, what could you automate within your organisation? What are some things that tasks that you do time in, time out, again and again, that you could possibly automate or outsource so that you're more focused on working on the business instead of in the business? Um, and then marketing and sales. How, how are you promoting yourself? Are you out on social media? Where are you getting um, your branding out there and, and what are your th three uniques? Why should someone come to your organisation when it comes to looking at different RTOs and that conversion rates and things like that? When it comes to financial viability, it's looking at how you're managing your accounts, your cash flow um, and scaling and growth. And what are the opportunities when it comes to government funding or government grants that there may be um, opportunities for your organisation to be able to access that funding? Um, when uh, with RTOs, a lot of focus is on government funding for the students. So the student is uh, getting their training paid for by the government. But there are so many more opportunities as a business owner um, where you could get access to government grants for your organisation, maybe developing new training products. Uh, it could be an accredited course that you could put together where you could get uh, government funding for that. Uh, there are also opportunities for female founders. So if you're a, your organisation is owned by uh, more than 51% is owned by a female leader, uh, there are opportunities for you to access government funding through that uh, female founders uh, grant as well. So, so many opportunities. There are also opportunities for events and delivering events in different states and different areas. Uh, the All of the um, states are very much wanting to get people back out to live events and going to, uh, going to venues around the city centres and also bringing people there. So there are opportunities for not only that event hire where you're um, delivering an event at a, a at a venue, it's also the opportunities of bringing people in, uh, into Sydney, for example, or Newcastle, uh, where there's also an opportunity for tourism as well in there as well. All right, so we've had a quick snapshot of those uh, critical drivers. So I'm gonna get you to do an activity right now. I'm going to get you to draw a circle like this. So on your, get a piece of paper and draw a circle like this. And I'm going to get you to rank yourself out of each of these critical drivers. So what I mean by that is when it comes to students and clients, so uh, Kira, thank you very much for speaking up earlier. You said you were having problems with students and clients. So you might rank yourself at a three or a four. So it might be down at that lower, lower level. So if it is um, looking at your ranking, it's looking at where are you at right now? How uh, Do you have the amount of students that you want to have within your RTO? And what is the retention rate? And then ranking that out of 10. So it's going Going around the wheel for each of these, so students and clients, uh, training products, so you might be happy with the training products that you have on your scope right now, or you might want to add other training products. Yes, Hedy, you've got a question. Yeah, I just wanted to say, sorry, it's not Kira that was, it was me that spoke to you okay. earlier. 
So okay, I, don't, I don't know which industry Kira's from, but um, yep. I'm from Indota Wellness College. Yes. Um, so we do beauty, remedial massage and salon management. So I just didn't want to give a, um, a cross reference, perhaps, you know, Kira yep. could be from something completely different. Thank yes, you. yes, yes. Thanks, Eddie, uh, for doing that. Um, that was because our chats weren't were, were working properly. <laughs> OK, so where are you at with students so, and clients then? Eddie? Who, who, are you, who are you talking to? Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Um, so that's what I was saying about our students. So, you know, in yeah. terms of um, um, our students that are coming into our industry, uh, yep. we're finding them. Um, specifically that they are not committing um, mm -hmm. so therefore we we are having a real issue and it's very very different different to years yeah. gone by um, when we would um, certainly for all the things that you're talking about in terms of our differentiators um, yes absolutely people would be coming in and they would be you know buying into the story and and everything that we stand for whereas now we're just finding that very 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 different and difficult yeah, and, and what do you think's changed? I, I, I think it's backlash of COVID. Yeah, yeah. I think people uh, and, are just very, you know, unsettled. Um, you know, the landscape has changed. People can't commit or won't commit. Um, I think also perhaps, you know, just the, the, the um, you know, the, the, the uncertainty in terms of, um, you know the financial landscape i mean you know obviously we just had an interest um hike yes. yesterday and indeed how's that going to um um you know trickle down to everybody um yeah. so i think there's an, an enormous amount of uncertainty there out there yeah yeah I would, so I, where I, would you where would you rank yourself out of 10 well i think we're doing everything that we possibly can and i mean certainly from you know an rto perspective we are very much student-led um, we the rigor that we have in our processes and so on uh, from a compliance perspective, we absolutely nurture and look after our students. Um, yeah. So so I'd say we're up there. I'd, I'd probably rank us as maybe an eight, eight and a half. Would you? Um, so when you rank yourself there with students and clients, do you have enough students? Uh, no, never have enough. Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> a wonderful, no, that's a wonderful problem to have. Nobody ever has enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so that's where I want you to rank yourself. Um, you might have a great student journey and that's really good, but how are you promoting that? So it might be the marketing side that you're not, uh, you may be the weak, weaker area. I think that our marketing has, you know, pivoted and turned um, very, very agile. Um, we, we are interstate. Um, I think they're interpreting the markets across the different states really well. Um, but yeah. I, I think it's a conundrum for everybody. And yeah. I'm interested to hear what Kira says. And in fact, what, what mm. industry Kira's from. Uh, funny enough, Hetty, I'm from the same industry. But so everything you're saying, <laughs> and that's why I'm sitting there <laughs> happy to take the credit for what you said before, because it was exactly what I wanted to say to Angela, that we're, we're finding exactly the same thing. Right. Yeah. Um, right. It's not only our industries. I, I take heart that it's not only our industries, though, Hetty, um, the beauty in the industry, the beauty and aesthetics industry. So um, yeah. and, and we are more in, we're aligned more with aesthetics. So, yeah, um, yeah it's it's a very interesting time. And, yes, now that we've just had another interest raise, uh, that that's a little concerning. But, well, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's uncertainty about, um, no, and we've also had, you know recession being yeah. flying around yes. as well and that scares yeah. people Angela yeah. can I just say our CEO Helen Rob Lacey has just popped her hand up so I'm I'm assuming Hi, that Helen. Like to comment as well <laughs> I was just going to say for students and clients we're at a four yeah 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 so that's what I was thinking as well um you might have a really good student journey but where are the students yeah 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 okay so um, I want you to be brutally honest. Now, you're not going to be showing this with us. We're not going to see it. So we, you just be brutally honest. Where would you rank yourself in each of these areas when it comes to students and clients? And be honest. Do you have the right type of students? Are they, are they the completers? Are they the quality that you want? Um, 
Are they, do you have enough students or sufficient students to be able to fill your classes so that you're able to uh, deliver that quality education because you've got sufficient funds coming in to pay for those courses? Um, it's not just if you do have a good student journey, that's awesome. How are you promoting it? How do how do your potential students know who you are and why they should join you? What are your three three uniques? What makes you unique about any over any other uh, RTO? So that's where I want you to rank yourself there. So if you've gone through, I want you to go through each of these eight critical drivers and really focus on, be honest, where would you rank yourself right now? When it comes to team, have you got the right people sitting in the right seats on your bus and your RTO? Um, do you have the right leadership team? Do you have the right structure to be able to manage your ongoing um, leadership team and, and development and growth of your of, of your RTO? One of the things that we've implemented in at Vivacity is we've implemented the entrepreneurial operating system. And you'll see we've got Amanda online uh, today. Amanda is our chief operations officer and I'm the CEO. So my role is more visionary and looking at at how all of the opportunities that we can have within our RTO. Major change, Amanda uh, stepped up into that role last year. It's had a major impact on our organisation because I can come up with the ideas and Amanda makes sure it gets implemented. So that's her job is to um, implement it, but also monitor it and make sure that we are succeeding with those as well. Um, we also have a leadership team underneath, so we have different leaders in different roles uh, within the organisation, and we're actually finding that um, we're able to achieve a lot more when it comes to focusing on what are our uh, top 10 projects for the year. So we set rocks uh, and we're achieving all of those as well. So I want you to really think about your leadership and team. Who's on, on your team and could it be better? Could that be improved? and rank yourself out of 10. Systems and practices. This isn't just your student management system. This is looking at how are you automating those repetitive tasks? Are there tasks that you're doing that you should not be doing? Should you be outsourcing it or should you have another team member who should be doing that? Uh, what are the, how are you managing leads coming in and converting those leads into sales? What processes do you have in place? Rank yourself out of 10 for that. Marketing and sales. So it might be that you have really good marketing, but what are you marketing and where are you marketing? Where are your target audience and how are you reaching that target audience? Uh, that one's a crucial part. It, you know, it's well and good sending out posts on social media, but how are you engaging them to want to sign up, to want to come to your RTO? And one of the strategies that uh, we have suggested and we suggested with our clients is get a taster course, get a free little taster course of what it's like to be a student at your RTO. And this can be an evergreen online course that the student could take where they get a taste of what it's like to be a student at your RTO. And that's a great marketing strategy to have in place. Another one is scorecards. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, our clients are now starting to do scorecards. Uh, we have a number of scorecards that we use as well. And the scorecard is like this ranking system where you can identify where you're at um, in when it comes to your career, um, what do you want to do with your career and whether they're suitable students for your um, industry sector as well. So it's really identifying those. Um, when it comes to financial viability, have you got enough money coming in the bank? Are you able to cover all of your wages? We've got uh, a problem with team members wanting, um, so th there's opportunity right now where they could go anywhere. They could go get a job somewhere else. How do we retain them? And they want pay rises. What are you doing to be able to uh, cope with that um, and also maintain your financial viability when it comes to running your RTO as well? Because it's that getting that balance between that income and expenditure that you have within your organisation. What would you rank yourself there? When it comes to quality and compliance, it's not just looking at whether you're compliant with the standards for RTOs. 
What is the quality of the training that you're delivering? Do you have the right trainers delivering that training? Do you have the right training materials to deliver that training? Um, do you have the opportunities for students to have a blended mode of delivery when it comes to training? So where they could do face-to-face -face as well as online. Big thing is right now, a lot of students have an expectation that they're going to be able to access training online because the whole world has changed and the way we learn has changed as well. How have you adapted your training to meet those needs? Um, and then industry and networking. So you should have ranked yourself by now, each of these, and we should have some sort of wheel. Now, an ideal wheel would be one that's even. So we'd have them all even. But that's not the reality of life. Uh, we generally will have uh, our lines all over the place and we'll have an uneven wheel. What I want you to do now is the lowest ranking, that's what you should focus on this year. So whatever ranked the lowest um, and pick two or three areas um, and then identify what are some rocks or what are some projects that you could do, and I'm going to give you some suggestions uh, very soon, what are some projects that you could work on that would improve your ranking when it comes to those eight critical drivers? So focus on what are the lowest, and I'm going to take you through some examples now of different things that you could implement in 2023 to improve those areas. But I want you to really think about what are the why, where are you ranking the lowest, and that's what you should be focused on in 2023. All right, so um, let's break down those eight critical drivers. So we already had, we've had got two people online who said that students and clients is an area where they are struggling right now. But what strategies have you put in place to improve that, um, improve your student retention, uh, that student experience? Have you mapped it out? Do you, have you mapped out when you first uh, start marketing to a potential student and then when you engage them and what is that ongoing student journey? What have you mapped out for your students when it comes to looking at their student journey? Now, there are a lot of different projects that you can work on. When I, when I talk about projects, we're talking about uh, potential rocks that you could focus on. So rocks are uh, different projects that we're going to focus on each quarter of the year. So there are four quarters of the year. Uh, what we do with our clients, we get them to focus on three projects for each quarter. So that way you've got three months to focus on a goal that you want to achieve by the end of that quarter. Uh, we have three rocks uh, each quarter. So there are three things that we are focused on that we want to achieve. Now, why do we do this? Why do we set these projects? Because if we plan ahead of what we want to achieve by the end of the year, we're more likely to achieve it. If you don't know, if you're flying blind and you, um, you've got your uh, map, you know where you want to go, but how are you going to get there? You don't know what you're going to be doing unless you're actually mapping it out and looking at it on a regular basis. So one of the things that we do is we have our mission control. So the mission control is 10 projects uh, that we're going to work on for the year. And I have them right next to me. They're on the wall. So these are our 10 uh, goals that we've set for this year. This is what we do uh, working with our clients. But we set 10 goals that we want to achieve by the end of the year. Where do we want to be in three years, two years and 12 months? Uh, what do we want to achieve? When it comes to finances, what do we want uh, in the bank uh, and what do we want to achieve out of those? And then we look at all of these eight critical drivers and we identify what are some possible projects that we could work on this year? Now, I'd like to know, is there anybody online who's ever done anything like this where you've set your goals for the year? Helen? You can come off chat, off mute. I'm involved in another leadership team and we do that constantly in, in that part of the business and I'm about to do it in this part of the business. Yeah, Excellent, so excellent. We had two days strategy yesterday, so we map out all our tasks and we put um, three projects that we've, we've chosen. Um, yep. But we just thinking of it in the other team, we do do 10 for the year so possibly I could stretch it yeah looking at you just, grade, do just grading what you've done there yeah, yeah. I could possibly yeah, yeah put it into so, quarters yeah 
Yeah, so as you've said, we've, we set 10 projects for the year. Um, even though there's um, 12 months and you could possibly do 12, the reason why we do 10 is because other things come up over yep. the year. And sometimes one of those projects might be a bit bigger than uh, what you thought it was going to be and you might need to carry it over to another quarter. Yeah, so you might have experienced that. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. be a bit too <laughs> ambitious, yeah, and you get Yes, there. yes, yeah. yes. As visionaries, we do that all the time. <laughs> we always think we can do more than what we uh, can actually do, and that's why doing this is really good because it's not just for you. It's for everyone on your team. Mm -hmm. Everyone should know what your goals are for the year. So it's very, very important and crucial that you are sharing this with all of your team members. And that's why we do it as a poster. Uh, we also have an online version uh, and we're actually creating a software this year uh, that we hope to have uh, released next year that will also manage all of this as well. So uh, it's looking at it specifically for RTOs because we've got remote teams now and, and teams all over the place. So how can we do this digitally? So it's setting your 10 projects and then each quarter we choose three of these. So we focus on three of these and then everyone on the team is focused on those. Now we have company goals. So these are the company goals. Then we have department goals. So the uh, department might break down one of those rocks or they might have a different rock uh, that they're focused on. These are some examples of different rocks that you could put together. So possible projects. So hopefully you're taking some notes down and really looking at if students and clients is a weakness in your area when it comes to the eight critical drivers, what are some things that you could put in place that would improve that? So it might be really looking at that student journey. What is, how do we get that student? And then when we do get our marketing out to them, how are we engaging them, getting them onto our mailing list? So do you have a taster course? Do you have a scorecard? Do you have something for free that you could give that would give them a taste of what it's like to be uh, a student at your RTO? And then how are you retaining them when it comes to the delivery of training? How are you engaging with them and ensuring that they're completing their training? And then once completed, what referrals are you offering? So are you offering them to go out and refer your RTO to their friends and colleagues? Uh, and what is the opportunities for them to bring students to you? They've already experienced your RTO. They know what it's like. Is there potential where you could go back to other students that completed the training with you maybe pre-pandemic that could you could get them to be a referral for you. So they could go out and refer uh, people to your RTO. Um, have you done testimonials? Have you gone back to students, previous students, and found out where what happened when they completed the training and where are they now? Could you do a testimonial or a video of this is the student that started with us in this year, uh, this month, they completed the training and this is where they are now and uh, looking at that student journey and what did they get out of the training and what were the opportunities like they got a job, how long have they been in that job, uh, what did they learn in that training that was really crucial when they were placed into that role. These are great opportunities that you can share those experiences of what your previous students had. So, uh, so I'm going to point out Hedy and Kira for this. Uh, that might be something you might want to look at. Go and look at previous students and what did they do and where are they now? And could you do a video testimonial from them that you could put on your website and share that um, experience with other people uh, that may be looking at doing training in your organisation. So these are different types of projects that you could possibly work on when it comes to students and clients, uh, really identifying those student needs and then the industry needs and then how are you adjusting your training and assessment to meet those needs. So what have you got in place? So there's lots of different uh, types of projects here that you could possibly work on. So Helen, you said that you were now going to do this for your RTO. Is there something in here that you could focus on for the RTO uh, for the next 12, uh, three months or by the end of this year? Definitely, right. yeah, yeah, definitely we need to improve on our, um, you mentioned it before, on our systems practices, we really need to improve. So get some more automation in the enrolment process yeah. and just some clear scripts and we all need to get on the page there so that we're actually um, 
yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting them over the line and getting them signed up. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. definitely be my focus for this quarter, just the enrolment okay. process. And I've got a new team there, just got to get them all online and yeah. make sure the process is clear, the scripts are clear, we've got the goal is clear and, you know, um, I, I think that will improve immensely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is our suggestions for systems and practices. Uh, it might be an upgrade of your student management system. It might be looking at implementing or improving an online training that you could possibly um, include. Uh, one thing that a lot of RTOs did during the pandemic is they did uh, recorded a lot of their training. What have you done with that? Are you using that? Is there some of those recordings that you could use as a free taster course that you could, you've already got the content there? Could you turn it into an evergreen video that students could access or potential we did, students? We did do a taster course for them online. So we have yep. done that, which was good. But interestingly enough, we thought we were just going to remove that, but you've just made me think, no, I should have that back in. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that's a really good outline and it'll be fantastic for us to, to mull over and pick some things from there. Yep. Yeah, and it is a great opportunity because the thing is, what they've got, uh, pot these potential students have the opportunity. They could go to TAFE. They could go there and do their training, and they may not even know about an RTO and what do you do a private as a private organisation, what do you do differently compared to TAFE? Mm. So that comparison is also very good. Yes. Yep. Mm. And I'm Thanks. sure you do way better than what TAFE <laughs> offer. Our offering is really good. We don't have a problem once they get there. It's, yeah. it's getting them to commit. Yeah. Um, and that's the real, yeah, and I think it's due to all those things we said, the climate, the worry, recession. Yeah, it's it's all a bit of a worry. It um It is the major um, concern yeah. for me, yes. Okay, so the big thing is you know what their uh, blockages are. You know where what they're concerned about. They're worried about a recession. They're worried about interest rates. They're worried, like, all of these different things. What yes. can you do to help them overcome that? That's what you need to think about. Mm -hmm. So how do we allay those fears, alleviate them from that, and show them the way of opportunities for, like, we're always going to need training and we're always going to need to change to the constant changing environment of all different industry sectors. How do you help the student do that? It's interesting because we, we have amazing pathways and they, you know, 80% of our students go into our franchise and work, you know, halfway through the course. So there's yeah. a real pathway for employment and a change and a promise. Um, it's just that they, you know, the lifestyle change that's happened, the reflection that's happened through COVID, yeah. um, they've got this really valuing time more than commitment yep. so yep. their nervousness to come away from having a period like they want to keep that balance of time they yes. don't want to journey back into something so we did transition we did make use of all of our resources online and we did mm -hmm. do a two plus one model so it's two yep. days in campus and one online so they could enjoy that balance yes. um still work and all of those things but I find that that's that that they're very tentative to commit and they would either rather do without money and do they've learned to live with less they've learned to live with less and yeah. they've learned to value a walk in the park and yeah. a, co a coffee once a week instead of every day so they've learned that time and quantity of of consumerism isn't always going to lead to happiness, I think. So there's yep. this, while we transition through this year, they're all contemplating and are very tentative to drop their toe into that commitment yep. and get back on that pathway, even if it's an exciting pathway. They're yep. still, I still feel there's a, a they're just holding back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that would be something, it's not doesn't come under systems and practices, that would be more around your marketing. It's really, and that student experience. So it's looking at that student journey and how are you sharing that with your potential market. Now, the, the thing is you need to focus on what are their biggest problems and mm -hmm. how are you going to resolve those biggest problems. Mm -hmm. So we know with RTOs, it's time, money and compliance. And everything we do, is around those three areas. So all the training that we do, we we did a survey back in 2019 and identified, and we actually asked everyone, what is your biggest problem? What is your problem? 
And those three were overwhelmingly the biggest problems that they had was time, money and compliance. Now, compliance, we're all over. We've been delivering compliance webinars uh, for well, nine years now. So it's been a long time since we've been doing that. And that's where the eight critical drivers came about because we identified, well, time and money, I know where those problems are and I know how some possible solutions um, how do I get it out there? So I, I use scorecards, I use ebooks, I use videos. There's lots of different ways you can do that. How are you doing that? How are you getting that out to your potential market? You know their problems. How are you addressing those problems? Mm -hmm. How are you alleviating? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I want you to think about that. I really want, like, when it, particularly when it comes to students and clients. Now, uh, the next uh, eight critical drivers is on the 6th of March, and I will be covering students and clients. And it's great today because I've got a lot of feedback on what where are your problems right now, and I will address them in the webinar um, next month where we focus on that within students and clients. But I want you to think about, okay, what's a project that you could work on? How do you get that student experience out to your market? How are you addressing their roadblocks? Why they're not coming in and doing your training? What is stopping them? And how can you alleviate that and make it easier for them? So it's really focusing on that sort of side of it. All right, next one is training products. And this ties in really well with some of the problems that you've already identified uh, today is the training products that you have on your scope. Are they meeting your student needs? The way you're delivering them? how you're clustering the unit. So this is where micro-credentialing is major. You, you, is there a way that you could do a smaller taster course or maybe a pre-vocational? Remember back in many, many years ago, we had those pre-vocational course where it was a taster of a course before they committed to a full qualification. So it's giving them, you know, three, four units that they complete that gives them a taste of what it's like to work in that industry sector and they get a statement of attainment at the end for those units that they completed and it gives them that taste of what it's like to do training. And this could be a possible solution for a few people online today uh, where we you could possibly do something like that and you could call it a pre-vocational course. Uh, where they're getting a taster of that training um, and possibly uh, opportunities to enter into traineeships or apprenticeship. So is there an opportunity where they could do that taster of a course and then you could possibly place them with an employer um, under a traineeship? So they've done the taster with you first, got an idea of what the training is like um, and what the industry sector is like, and then you could possibly place them into um, a traineeship with uh, one of your employer clients. So is that an opportunity that you could have a look at? So have a look at these. These are different things that you could look at with training products. So it's how are you packaging those courses? How are you delivering it? Um, have you got your branding all across in your training? So those training products that you're delivering, is it consistent branding in there so that they, uh, when someone sees that branding, they know, oh, that's the RTO that I went to, or I've heard about this RTO. And this should be all across your PowerPoint presentations when you're delivering your training. The branding should also be consistent on your website and all of your social media marketing as well. Um, and that branding within, uh, when it comes to the training product. Um, and really, uh, with this one, really have a look at where are your student potential student problems? What are their problems right now? And how can you solve it with a training product? What type of training product? What type of delivery could you do? Um, and this is where you might need to go and ask your current students or go do some surveys and find out what do students want right now? That's where scorecards are fantastic because you do a free scorecard, you get it out there, asking them what is your problem right now when it comes to uh, going to education and training, and you can actually get the answers from them. We, we use the scorecard, so it's a free scorecard that we send out, but we use those scorecards to identify other training that we could do or other opportunities of services that we could provide that would meet those needs coming from the scorecard. Um, and the scorecard that we use is called Score App. 
So if anybody is interested in doing something like that, and I can even send you to one of our scorecards and you can uh, give it a go, uh, see what you think. I'm just going to try and find one of the scorecards. So we've got... Um, We've got one on the RTO superhero. So are you an RTO superhero? We also have one for Stella Trainer. Now this one, I'm gonna share this one because this one is great to share with your trainers and assessors. So this scorecard is the Stella Trainer scorecard and it's identifying, so I've popped it in the chat so hopefully everyone can see it. Um, it's a scorecard where it's asking the trainers um, about how are they meeting the requirements of the standards? How are they maintaining their currency? How are they um, engaging with industry and things like that? With this scorecard, it's 40 questions. We use this to identify future training for trainers and assessors. So we ask these questions, we get that feedback from trainers and assessors, and then we use that to develop more training that's going to meet their needs. Could you do something like this? Could you look at upskilling maybe current people working in the workforce or people who want to go for a career change or maybe they want to transition into a managerial role. Is there a scorecard or something like this that you could do that you could get data back from them to identify possible opportunities in the future? So I'd uh, love for you to share that in with your trainers and assessors. Um, what we use, what we do with that is we just use that data to identify future professional development opportunities for trainers and assessors, um, which this year we actually launched a series of masterclasses specifically for trainers and assessors based on the feedback that we got from um, these scorecards. So uh, we we're able to identify training opportunities for those. So there's an opportunity. So that's a marketing opportunity, but it's also uh, where you can, uh, so where you can get leads and get their email addresses and then identify where you could possibly uh, address some of their training needs. But it's also an opportunity for you to get that data to identify, well, wh what type of training products do we need? How do we need to deliver it? So in the survey, you could ask them about would you prefer, do you prefer online delivery? Do you miss being in a classroom? Like there's different uh, types of questions you can ask and then use that data to improve your training and assessment. Okay, so that's training products. Leadership and team. So what projects could you put in place in the next 12 months that would improve your leadership and team? So one of the things that we already identified was that team rhythm. So looking at your meeting rhythms and how often are you meeting? Um, and I'm not saying that you need to meet more regularly. I'm just, I'm talking about is the meetings that you're having fruitful? Is it, are you getting the outcomes? With our meetings, so if we have a weekly leadership meeting, we focus on the rocks. So we focus on what are our rocks and what, what are we doing? How are we progressing to achieve those rocks? So we have a weekly leadership meeting and all of the team leaders go to those. They also have their own uh, team meeting and they're focused on their department rocks. So what are their department rocks? Or one, it might be the company rocks. So everyone in the organisation is focused on your goals for the year and what you want to achieve. How could you do that? How could you implement that within your RTO? Um, so, the, so that's part of your leadership and team. Is there professional development opportunities uh, for your trainers or for your admin team? Uh, do you need uh, to outsource some of the tasks that you're doing? It might be that you're currently doing things that you shouldn't be doing within your organisation. Uh, you should be focused on, uh, no, the ultimate goal should be 80% of your time as a business owner should be spent on the business, not in the business. I'd like to know who's achieved that so far. Is there anybody online who's working 80% on the business? <laughs> no, I do. I work 80% of my time is on the business, not in the business. In the business is when I'm doing these. I do these webinars. I do the training, which I love. I love doing this sort of stuff. Um, but 80% of my time I'm working on the business and how can I build um, more opportunities, more training, more um, things that are going to meet those three problems that our clients have. So what are you doing to make sure that you're doing that? And when you're working 80% of the time on the business, this is that's when the business takes off. 
that's when you'll see a lot of change. That's when you're able to focus on these. What are the things that are going to drive your RTO and get it to build and grow to the scale that you want it to be? Um, and you, everyone on your team is focused on that. It's not just you uh, that is focused on that. Okay, so that's leadership and team. There's lots of opportunities that you could work on in there. Uh, some of the things that we cover in the eight critical driver training is uh, that development of your team, but also identify if you've got the right people on your team. So we call it, you've, you're driving a bus, the RTO bus, and do you have everyone in the right seat on that bus? And who's driving the bus? Who's directing the bus? So it's really identifying, have you got the right people in there? And uh, are they in the right seat? Sometimes you have the right people, but they're just not in the right seat. Uh, we do a, a team dynamics profile. So we get all of our team members to uh, do this profile and it really identifies where their strengths are and then we place them within their strengths. So we get them to work within uh, the organisation where they're working in their strengths. Uh, makes them much happier. Okay, systems and practices. Now, this year we're actually going to have a guest speaker coming to speak about systems and practices. Uh, this, is, the person who's going to be doing this, he implements systems into businesses. So it's looking at all of your processes and how can you automate those processes as well. Uh, that's uh, later in the year that we're doing that. I think that's June uh, that we've got that one scheduled for. Uh, he will be covering all of these different types of ways that you could implement systems within your organisation and get everyone on the same page. So making it more automated um, and everyone knows what everyone should be doing when it comes to that process, uh, which is very important when it goes comes to complying with uh, legislation, um, but also it's very important if you've got a system in place, it means it's going to be less work on you as in as a, in a leadership role to be able to implement that because you could actually share that with everyone on your team. So we have a system that we use uh, that was specifically built for Vivacity, uh, which is called Unicorn, and it has all of the process for uh, all of our packages for all of our clients. So we can see all of our clients on there. We know what package they're in and we know exactly what stage they're at uh, within that package. So it might be they're doing a, a new RTO. So we've got a process for a new RTO with a system that goes with that. And we've also got our membership. And in our membership, we do annual uh, systems checks or audits. And we also do assessment validation with the clients. And then we have a number of other activities depending on the level of membership that they have. But it it's all documented. The whole process is documented and it's really clear for everyone. So I can bring, so before I had Unicorn, I had to do everything. Whereas now we just train the team on how to use the system. So what systems could you implement in your organisation? On Student onboarding is a big one. It's a huge one. How are you onboarding your students and how have you got consistency when it comes to onboarding uh, those students as well? All right, let's move on to the next one, marketing and sales. This is one of my favourite areas. I love marketing and uh, sales and I love looking at marketing uh, practices and what you can put into place. Now, we've already talked about another number of different strategies that you could put in place, but there are so many things uh, where you could use marketing that's not just uh, getting, you know, social media posts, it's things like scorecards and ebooks and taster courses and things like that, and getting that out there so people can try before they buy, so they uh, get an idea of what it's like to be a student in your organisation. But there's so many other things. We talked about partnerships. Could you partner with a supplier? Uh, could you partner with another RTO uh, that may have the market or might have government funding? Is there opportunities for you to do that? Um, referral marketing. So uh, when a student finishes your training, you give them um, a gift card if they refer someone to your RTO. It is much, you're going to spend a lot less money getting someone to refer someone to your RTO than you would marketing. Because marketing, you need to uh, actually be in their face 12 times before they'll convert. That's the average. The average is 12, they've got to see you in 12 different places. Um, so it might be on social media, it might be in a video, it might be a scorecard, it might be 
um, your Google remarketing that you might be doing, so Google ads and things like that, they need to see you 12 times before they will make a decision that they're going to go with you as an RTO. So how are you doing that? How are you getting out there as much as possible in so many different areas that they're coming to you? So looking at those different strategies. And do you have a marketing calendar? So we have a um, marketing strategy that goes with our courses so that we are promoting those courses based around, so we've got that marketing for every single event that we are delivering. Um, how are you doing that? Have you got that mapped out for the year? We've got the whole year's worth of training already mapped out and we've got our marketing already mapped out for that as well. Have you done that? Is this a project that you could work on? Okay, financial viability. Now, what we, uh, we've actually got a guest speaker coming for this one as well. And what we're going to be delivering this year with financial viability is uh, we're going to be delivering a session on uh, government funding. So how to apply for the government funding and what opportunities are out. And that one's not till August. Uh, we specifically did that one closer to when the contracts will open up. So we'll uh, be showing you some strategies there. And we've also got a guest speaker who will be speaking about grants and how to access business grants for your organisation as a business. Uh, we had her speak last year as well, Kim Yabsley. Uh, she's an expert in this area where uh, there are so many government grants out there that you wouldn't even know that were there that is for your business. So it's not for the students, it's for growing and scaling your business. So what opportunities could you have when it comes to financial viability within your organisation? Uh, we also, a couple of years ago, at our strategic planning retreat, we did a session on um, profit first. So it's implementing the profit first method. The profit first is where you're identifying it's different buckets of money. So uh, making sure that you've got your buckets of money for your tax and your super, you've got a bucket of money for profit, um, you've got money, pocket of money for your expenses, and then, of course, uh, for the owner of the business as well. So it's the owner's um, uh, bucket of money uh, that we have in there as well. So Profit First is really, really good. If you haven't read the book, I can highly recommend it. You can also get it an audio book as well. Uh, but Profit First is very much for managing your cash flow uh, within your business. Uh, so that's an opportunity that you could put into place as a project for 2023. Uh, the, here are some other ones that you could do. It might be refinancing your loans that you have, um, looking at a positive cash flow cycle. So what is the process there? Have you ever set budgets and do you stick to the budgets? So it might be reviewing those budgets and looking at your financial forecasts uh, of what you want in the future. Um, this is what we have. Uh, so that's uh, Amanda's responsibility. She was just nodding her head there. Uh, that's her responsibility as Chief Operations Officer to, to manage that as well. Um, and we do have that uh, within our rocks as well, that uh, managing those finances as well. Okay, and then quality and compliance. So um, a lot of people already have systems and practices in place for managing compliance with the standards, but how are you um, maintaining your ongoing professional development for your team members, for yourself, for your trainers and assessors? Um, what other things are you doing to ensure that you're meeting the compliance requirements and then improving the quality of your training? So it's looking at how you uh, how are you doing that? So for our members, we get them to come along to a weekly mastermind where they set their goals. So they set their, uh, got their rocks for the quarter and then we do high value activities. So every week we set three high value activities that we're going to focus on for the week and then we hold, hold them accountable for that. Um, so Helen talked about being part of a business mastermind group. That's perfect. Uh, doing something like that is really good for the growth and particularly um, looking at all of the critical drivers, that, that's certainly going to help you with that. Uh, we do a mastermind that's specifically for RTO owners. So it's the owners and senior management uh, within RTOs where we do this mastermind, and it's very much focused on those rocks and all of these critical drivers um, within your organisation. So lots of different opportunities there. Uh, might be updating your training and assessment strategies. When was the last time your TASs were updated? They should be updated at least annually. Um, is there a strategy or a system that you could put in place for managing those um, updates, so updating your training and assessment strategies? 
All right, industry and networking is the last one. So there's lots of opportunities with industry and networking. And as I said, uh, with the new draft standards, uh, there's very much a focus on community as well now. So what are you doing to engage with community and build your training around that community that's meeting those community needs? Um, that, that's going to be a big focus uh, with the new draft standards. So great opportunities for you to get involved uh, with your local communities. Um, some other things is looking at uh, different government funding that you might be able to get for your students or your clients, uh, so helping them uh, getting engaged with that. There's also government funding for doing undertaking research. So that's where I was talking about these grants. So you could do research for an industry sector to identify a micro-credential course that would meet that industry sector needs and you get paid to do the research for it. So uh, great opportunities and there are different opportunities in different industry sectors as well where you could do research and development uh, for those as well. Um, okay, so these are some possible projects that you could work on for 2023. Anybody got any questions about those? Where are you at right now? So if you've got a question, I'd love to hear your question, but I want you to go back to that wheel and reassess yourself. <laughs> Go back to the wheel and reassess yourself. Where would you rank now? If if was there some opportunities that we've gone through today that you um, may not have known about before that you uh, could now implement? So re-rank yourself. Go back to that wheel. Re-rank yourself. And I'd like to see. Uh, have you ranked yourself higher, lower? Is there something that you want to focus on? Love to hear from you as well. Okay, I haven't got anybody volunteering, but hopefully you have you reassessed yourself on the wheel. So um, one of the things that we really focus on is uh, we were talking about those goals that we set for the year. And this is something that you should be doing with everyone on your team. It shouldn't be something that just the owner or the directors are doing. It should be something that everyone on the team knows about where you've set your grand vision and everyone knows what your grand vision is, um, your big hairy ass goal. So what is your 10 year big hairy ass goal that you've set and um, and need everyone to know what that goal is so that they are all on the same bus as you and driving in the same direction um, and they all uh, know what you're wanting to achieve um, and really setting like, what are your three-year goals, your two-year goals and your one-year goals and then monitoring that on a quarterly basis. So three rocks each quarter. So I heard Helen is already doing this, so that's awesome. Uh, focus on those three rocks and how are you keeping yourself and the team accountable to those rocks. So what are you doing to help make sure that you achieve those three rocks? Um, and then we have um, weekly meetings as well and a daily huddle. So the daily huddle is um, yesterday, today, any roadblocks and actions that need to um, be taken. So I really want you to think about where you're at right now and where do you want to be in the future um, and what do you want to achieve in the future? So where are you right now today and where do you want to be in the future? Do you want to be going downhill or do you want to be growing and scaling? Um, and if you do, there are lots of different ways that you can do this. So you can think about are you sinking, are you floating or are you scaling and where do you want to be in the next uh, 12 months and next 10 years. So what's your big hairy ass goal? So if you want to find out more about the eight critical drivers, uh, as I said earlier, we have one every month. So we deliver on the second Wednesday of every month and we cover one of the critical drivers each month. And I'll go through those dates again. But we've also got a app that you can access that has all of those eight critical driver training already in it. So we've got this app, you can uh, download it on your phone. So it's called uh, Vivacity Training App. Uh, you can download the app and you can access all of the previous eight critical driver training that we've done. Um, but we've also got uh, live training that you can access as well. So there's a range of different training that you can access. 
Uh, and part of the Sidekick membership, so uh, if you go to this link here, you'll actually find the um, on the website more information about our Sidekick membership. So our Sidekick membership is more about the training, the uh, eight critical drivers, the being held accountable. So it's like a coaching program. Uh, we have a weekly mastermind that you can join in uh, under the VIP. So if you become a VIP sidekick, you can uh, do those as well. And it's where we keep you accountable to make sure that you achieve these goals that you've set for the year. Um, and what are you doing to achieve those? We have a range of training that you can access uh, through the app, also online. So you can access all of the training online as well um, and the app is available in the Google Store as well as the Apple Store. Uh, we have a range of training so all of our training throughout the year we record all of the live events and they all go on to the Bavasti training app so you can access those uh, but you could uh, we also have a superhero uh, membership which is uh, our full consult package and policies and procedures and documents and things like that as well. Um, but, you know, the big thing is with the Sidekick membership is why struggle with professional development when we've got it all online for you already. We've also got all of our trainers PD on there now. So it's nice and easy for the trainers and assessors uh, to be able to access. And it starts from $55 a month. So it's great PD that trainers can access uh, where we've got um, all of our uh, trainers PD workshops uh, recorded and they go on there as well. And we also have uh, like we have the TAS superhero, we've got facilitation skills, we've got icebreaker training. So there's all sorts of training that we have online that you can access. Um, so from all of this, you could get or access to all of this training uh, through our on on our website, so you can just access it on our website. So just go to this uh, link here, and I'll pop it in the chat as well. Make it easy for you. You can find out more about the membership here and how to access that. Uh, we've got a range for trainers and assessors, as well as uh, for uh, the business owners and directors of the RTO as well. If you'd like to learn more about uh, our membership programs, you can go to the website, but you can also book a discovery call with Dave. So Dave is our sales manager and my husband, um, and he can answer any questions that you may have about any of our membership services, so including our superheroes. So the superhero membership is, and we've got a couple of clients on today uh, who are a superhero member. So I've got Sarah. Sarah's online today. She's a superhero member. Um, we're also setting her up as a new RTO as well um, and she can definitely tell you about what we do uh, in our membership program the weekly mastermind is the key to all of that where we're keeping you on track making sure that you're achieving your goals keeping you accountable and setting those high value activities um, every week as well so if you have any questions, just let me know. But that's it for today, right on the dot, uh, finished right on the dot. Um, I'd also like to know any feedback that you have from today. So it would be great if you could scan this QR code and complete uh, a short survey. It's a very short survey and give us some feedback about what you thought about today. And I would love to see you at our future um, Eight Critical Drivers Masterminds. And as I said earlier, these are all the dates that are coming up. So the 8th of March, I'll be student, covering students and clients. And this is very much how can we get, um, get new students, new clients, also retaining them and uh, looking at that client journey as well. So how are you um, managing your student journey and uh, how are they how are you using that to share in your marketing and get it out there? Why should a student become, why should someone become a student of your RTO? So that is our next one, 8th of March. Love to see you uh, come along for that. Um, if you become a VIP uh, sidekick, you get access to all of these as well. So you get access to the live uh, masterclass for the eight critical drivers. Um, if you become a superhero member, you also get the strategic planning retreat. So at the end of uh, November, we do it every year. We have a strategic planning retreat where we actually set your goals for 2024. 
So in November, we will be doing a strategic planning retreat and we'll be setting your goals for 2024. Um, but if you become a superhero member, we actually focus on this straight away. So we'll start getting you to set your quarterly uh, rocks as well as your goals for the year. And then we keep you accountable with those as well. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, you can also get in contact with us at um, uh, hello at vivacity.com.au. So thank you very much for attending today's webinar. I hope you got a lot out of it and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Bye for now.